Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today I am finally getting around to upgrading the garage with some LED lighting. When I moved here, this garage had only two light bulbs and a half working 4 foot T12 light fixture. I recently did a full paint correction on my Acura TSX and hoped to make a video of the process. But having a black car and a dark garage, everything turned out too dark to see any good detail, even with some extra lighting set up. I've been saving my YouTube money for a while now and decided it was time to install some new lighting. That's right, I thank you all for making this happen. So I'm going to do a giveaway soon and one lucky subscriber is going to win a customized gift, but more on that later. One thing I loved about my pole barn was the amount of lighting. I had a total of 32 T8 fixtures and 4 rows of 8 each across the shop. That was 64 T8 bulbs total. And that was really more light than I ever needed. It was like an operating room in there. The white floor definitely helped. All the light was perfect for filming. And there was never any time wasted on setting up, moving, or adjusting lighting in between shots. My portable work lights collected dust for years until I moved to this current garage. I had okay light in the afternoon thanks to the windows, but the two light bulbs and T12 light fixture weren't helpful in producing quality content for uploading. I had to set up every light I had in blast, whatever I was working on, just to get a decent video. So I did some lighting research on the garage journal forums and decided LED was the way to go. They have a great thread full of LED options and pricing that I'll post in the description. To the drawing board. I designed three different layouts. The first one had four rows of four, but I was concerned it wouldn't be enough lighting. The next had six rows of four, but was more than I wanted to spend at 24 fixtures and 48 bulbs. I ended up going with a setup of six rows with three fixtures per row for the most even lighting and to stay close to my budget of 600 bucks. I purchased 18 max light 4 foot LED ready fixtures for 287 shipped. I'm using this hole here because I'm mounting them flush to the ceiling, but there's a tab you can bend out 90 degrees to attach them to the beam if your ceiling is open. It comes with wiring attached to two tombstones. Here in the bag we have the other two tombstones, instructions, two wire nuts, and even two drywall anchors with screws, which I'll be using. There are knockouts on the ends and sides, but I'll be using this one right in the center. I did get some rubber grommets to put in the knockouts to protect the wiring, since some of them had kind of a sharp edge. For bulbs, I went with a total of 36 4 foot Versa 18 watt T8 LED bulbs. These have the prongs on both ends for mounting into a T8 size fixture, although power is only required at one end, so that saves time wiring everything up. I went with the fuse for a little softer, more even light. 5000K temperature for a nice white light, just like in the pole barn. These bulbs were also $287 shipped. That brought the total to $574, which left some money for wire and wire nuts, staying pretty close to my $600 budget. The first and actually hardest part of this whole process was measuring 18 evenly spaced lights in six rows. Other than a few drywall cracks in a ceiling, I didn't have much to go off of for measuring. It's hard to judge if these lines are straight or not when I'm up on the ladder trying to mount a light, so I made a tool to check my lines. Here's a tripod and duct tape to the head is a laser pointer. I've got the tripod all locked down except for the panning up and down. So looking at the ceiling, I've got my laser pointer and I'm able to go from one side where I have my row marked all the way across to the other side where I have the other end of the row marked. I can see that this one is in a straight row. No need to go buy fancy new tools or equipment when you can make your own. I popped in the dummy tombstones on one end and the wired ones on the other end. After marking the holes on the ceiling, I drilled a pilot hole for the anchors and hammered them into the drywall. 
and then attach the fixture by screwing them into the drywall anchor. I ended up putting a washer on the screw because the heads were too small for the slotted mounting hole on the housing. Last, I went back with a half inch bit and drilled a hole for the wires to come through from the attic. Alright, I've got them all mounted to the ceiling and I managed not to drill into any studs. Now, it's time to head up to the attic and run some wire. Okay, I'm up in the attic. I brought a couple work lights up to see what I'm doing. You can see there's no insulation over the garage, which is not efficient at keeping it warm, but very helpful when doing wiring. The roof is pretty high in the center. Eventually, I'd like to add some insulation and then floor part of this in for some additional storage. Now over here is above the single garage door, and I'm gonna wire these two rows of lights separately from the four rows on the side with a double door. I've already got a junction box on a separate switch to tap into. Over here are the four rows above the double door and I'm just going to take power from the existing light bulb receptacle and use that for my new lights. Here you can see a drywall anchor I put in the ceiling. And here's the half inch hole for the 12-2 wire to run through. Here's my 12-2 wire. I bought a 100 foot roll since I'm going to be finishing part of the basement soon. I might only need about half of this today, but it's cheaper if you buy it in the bigger roll. Here you can see what I was talking about with these two rows being on one switch. And then the four rows on this side being on their own switch. Just to save some energy if I don't need them all on at once. Okay, I'm up here walking on the trusses and being very careful because if I slip, I'm going through the ceiling. Hell, I might actually go viral if I fall through the ceiling. I should have someone filming me from below in case I slip. Here's all I'm doing with the wire through the hole to one and out the next. Then securing the wire with some staples. Back in the garage, I just connected the wiring for the last light. Black is hot, white neutral, and ground is bare. This one's on the end of the chain, so it only has one 12 2 wire coming through the knockout. Most of them have two wires. While I'm under each one with the ladder, it's a good time to put the cover on. The cover locks in with this metal clip. Just turn it 90 degrees and it's locked. And there's one on each end. And the bulbs. They install just like a T8 fluorescent bulb would. Just push the pins in and twist the bulb a quarter turn. And there we go. Now, I'm gonna go turn on the breaker for the moment of truth. Let there be light. It's so much better in here. It was like a dungeon before. Everything is so well lit. And this is without any daylight through the windows too. This place looks so much bigger and cleaner. I'm excited to wrench out here now. Oh, except wait a minute. What's going on over here with this light? Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I put the bulbs in upside down. This was the last one I did and I must have been in a hurry. That's what it should look like. I can take that crappy old T12 fixture down now. I do still need to rewire the fan. I'm going to connect that to this outlet right here so the fan can still be used even if the lights are off. But I'm not going to need a ceiling fan in Ohio for the next six months, so I'll get to that later. Hey, more on that giveaway I talked about earlier. I'm having a custom poster printed of my 1985 extra cab, and it's going to end up hanging on one of your walls. I'm going to do some kind of a trivia or something to give all my subscribers a chance to win this. You got the one I did a few weeks ago for the tire shine in like a couple hours, so I'll make this one a little more challenging. The poster should be here by my next video, so hit that bell icon in the top corner and you'll be notified as soon as I upload the video and you can get the jump on the first comments to try to win this thing. I really am thankful to all who watch, subscribe, and comment on my videos. You all have made this possible. So now I have a well at garage full of 80s Toyota pickups and that means more Toyota videos will be on the way. Stay tuned. Thank <laughs> you.